Well, the one thing that, as a, as a sneaker collector, that I've noticed about Riff LA uh, compared to, let's say, a flight club, <clears throat> is that a uh, flight club does an 80 20 split, mm-hmm. whereas you guys do an 85 15. For brand new shoes. For brand new shoes. 80 20 for the worn shoes. Okay. And so 80, we still do the 80 20, but it's worn shoes. It's for the worn shoes. And I don't think flight club does worn shoes at all. No, I don't think they do. Right. So, in terms of apples to apples, Flight Club does 80-20, you guys do 85-15. Yeah. Is there a reason why you guys are taking a smaller percentage for yourselves and giving a bigger percentage to the to the shoe owner? Uh, no reason at all. If it, there's a reason, I don't know it personally. But I think it's only, you know, it's only smart way you're trying to... 80-20 on a brand new shoe, that's kind of a long shot. Because, right. I mean, what are shoes going for now these days? Like uh, the CP3, <laughs> as I'm looking right now, CP313. Uh, that one what retail at 200 plus tax 220 the market is at 250 if it's 80 20 it's gonna get cut down and the person's not even gonna get their money back with tax that's one of my things when I'm doing a buyback or consignment or whatnot I try to at least get you know some money back in their pockets above what they already paid for mm-hmm. you know it's all you know you're not trying to get rich off of people like a quick scam or whatnot, but yeah. I think you know, eighty-five fifteen works for us. Now, most businesses, not, not just shoe stores, but just businesses in general, they don't do a consignment type of business. Usually, they they buy things, you know, at what they think they'll make a profit off of, and they sell it. Well, why, why did Riff LA decide to, to base their entire business on consignment? Don't know. I, that that's part of the history. I don't know. But, I mean, it's one of the biggest markets out right now, shoes. Mm-hmm. I saw, I forgot where I saw this at, I think it was Complex or whatnot, but they said that the stock of a Jordan 3 Black Cement 3 from 2011, uh, the number was higher than an Apple stock. And that's, that tells you everything. This is like, some people, you know, make living out of this. Yeah. Simons just bring in the shoes and that's how they pay for their you know rent food whatever it is so so you know people that completely support their lifestyle oh yeah just off of reselling shoes yep and they come to riff la to we have a few but i also know a lot outside so there's a lot of people that just make i mean like that uh like supreme you see them dudes that camp out that's in that documentary that was put out not mm-hmm. long ago a lot of people make the living off of that from a forty-four dollar shirt to it just becomes two fifty as soon as it walks out the store. Same thing with shoes. Some shoes have that value. Yeezys. Yeah. Two twenty. Right now, you've seen a turtle go for like two grand. Yeah. You're making you caught that's a paying, thousand percent markup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're making you're making your rent money there. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, it all. It you know. Shoes is the craziest market right now. But but you guys don't just do consignment. You know, you talk about on, on your Instagram page that you do buyouts. Oh, yeah, we so, do buyouts. So, people, so how does that work? People come in with like a big collection and you just cash them out? When they, the other day, me and uh, one of my managers, we went to Carson and we did a five, we went through 500 shoes. The dude was over it. He's like, come check them out. We went, then we pulled out about a buck 50 out of those. 150 100, shoes. 150 shoes. A lot of people, you know, things happen in life. People need to pay rent, something goes down. People have kids. Yeah, stuff like that. I, a dude is like, I'm having a kid, I need to get rid of this. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, we, we try to help people like that. Of course, we don't try to, we can't give you what you get consignment. We promote consignment first. Like, come, you get more money if you have time. Okay. But, you know, most of the time, people just want that quick cash. So, we try to help them out as much as we can. Okay, so so the buyout price is usually a little bit lower than consignment. Uh, slightly below. Okay, like what's the biggest buyout that you remember doing? Biggest in money or biggest in shoes? Money wise. Uh, it's up in the like. I remember I had this dude just bring me Yeezy seven fifties like every other week, and it would just it accumulated up. I I want to say minimum fifteen hundred. I mean thousand. Okay, but how about just. One collection, <coughs> cash out right then and there. What was the biggest one that you remember? The 150 was about, I want to say, seven, eight grand. Seven or eight grand. But that's the most recent. I mean, I, dude, I'm here five days a week, six days a week. I, collect, I can't remember, but that's the most recent one, so I, I can remember that one. So that's, 
the most recent one. About so, so you have buyouts close to 10 grand? Oh, yeah. Sometimes even more. Okay. Um, when people bring you shoes, how do you make sure that they're actually authentic? I mean, there's always something that triggers it. Like, um, I mean, we see fakes all, all the time. People want to come in here for legit check because, you know, they, uh, if the market value is at 1000 and they're getting at 500 it's kind of sketchy. Right. Okay, what's the catch? What's the catch? There's always something that throws you off. Um, maybe the toe box is too wide. Maybe the color's a little bit off. Um, the hardest ones, I have to say, is the one. The Jordan 1. 1 and 3 and the DBs. The Because D- there's so much detail into those. So it's like kind of hard to pinpoint one thing on the DB threes. Uh, on the Jordan Eleven, you kind of it gives it away with the with the outer side, with the the outsole, the, the icy part. Sometimes that's discolored, or you know the color's not right, or it's too see through, whatever. But I mean, there's step by step. First thing I do is smell it. And well, when it's un, when it's worn, I kind of don't do that. But when it's brand new, I, that's my first <laughs> instinct: just grab it, take a little. Uh, yeah. smell. You I mean, you can, you can, it tells you a smell lot. The smell, you know, smell the worn shoes. That'd be kind of a... Yeah, that's kind of like... Yeah, you don't you want know. to do that. But, um, yeah, I mean, the brand new shoes have a distinct smell to it. Like, the ones have this one distinct smell to it. Everybody should know. It's just that one, like... It's almost like a... Like, if you hit it, it feels like you're smelling your drug. You know what I'm saying? So the one has a distinct smell. The Yeezy 750 has a distinct smell. Um... What else? Even the boost, the, the little one, the 350, that one has, has, you know, a very, they're all different smells, but you kind of know it. So you're looking at definitely maybe over $100,000 worth of product. I mean, compared to the amount of Yeezys that there's in stock, probably closer to a million after it's all calculated. On the website, there's a little over a million. What is the one Jordan model that more people ask for than anything else? One, f- one, three, and four. One, three, and four. And then six. And the six? Okay, what about the colorway? Like, if you, if you, like, if you Original. Say, Original colorways is the, the one to go. 